Welcome to this video presentation in which we show you how to synthesize or create a signal in MATLAB. Um, now the reason why you might want to do this is to test a system. Uh, so it's a very common thing for engineers and scientists to, to need to create a signal um, that they'll use to test some system. So the signal that I'm going to describe um, I'm going to represent it as a continuous signal first of all, so I have an amplitude A, some time T, and um, let me just change the size of this brush. Uh, so signal A, of amplitude A, uh, is changing over time T, and we'll imagine it starts off at a value of, let's say, 50, and increases to a value of, say, 90, over a 0 0.5 second period and then it'll decay reasonably quickly until it reaches approximately zero after um, that looks like another second okay so that's 1.5 seconds there so this is the signal that we'd like to create um, now first thing I do you know, when I'm working on this type of problem is I try to, s to break the signal into smaller parts so I have basically got a straight line and an exponential decay. So looking at seg1, that's basically the equation, I can describe it mathematically using the equation for a straight line, which is going to be m by t um, plus some offset c. So the slope of the line is going to be, well it goes from 50 up to 90 over a half a second, so the slope is then 80, so it's 80 by t plus the offset, which is 50. Um, now if this doesn't make sense, you should really take a look at the um, video presentation, which showed the capture of a discrete signal from a mathematical perspective, and um, that should make sense then. Um, seg2, if we look at that, it's uh, an exponential decay. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just treat it in isolation. So I'm just going to look at it as if it's a signal on its own, starting at time t equal to 0. S starts off at a value of 90 and decays. It's not great decay. Starts off at 90 and then decays over uh, a one second period. Okay. So mathematically, you define this signal as being. Um, an exponential which is e to the minus t so over alpha so that's a decaying exponential now it starts off at a value of 90 the value of alpha uh, is our time constant so I want my signal to decay to zero after f after one second so I know from my knowledge of exponentials that it takes about five time constants so five alpha is equal to the the, 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 is equal to the duration it will take to reach approximately zero. So that's equal to one. So therefore, alpha will be equal to 0 0.2. So I have two mathematical expressions that I can create signals for. Now again, I'm going to refer you back to the mathematical view of um, data acquisition um, to get a full understanding of this. Now I'm going to so I need to create the discrete signal that represents this uh, this continuous signal. And I'm going to use a sampling rate of, let's see, I'll use that's 0 0.5, so maybe that's 0 0.25, 0 0.125. Okay, so the sampling period I'm going to use, t equals to 0 0.125. Okay, and equally for the second part of the curve, I'll have a number of discrete sample points and over a one second period I should have eight samples okay so I want to re to really work on each of these I'm going to look at this straight line on its own and then this exponential decay on its own try to try to create two separate discrete signals and then concatenate them or append them together to create my final signal okay so um Let's switch to MATLAB. And really what I want to describe first of all is the times 
at which um, I want to measure my signal. Seg1 time. So I want to measure it at every 0 0.125 seconds. So that's 0, 0 0.125, 0 0.25, 0. Um, 375, 0 0.5. So there are my seg1 times. Okay. Now there's a quick way of of calculating those times. I could have easily have said so seg1 times. I could have calculated them by saying seg1 times is equal to 0 up to 0 0.5 in steps of 0 0.125. So this is a very common way to 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 write out a, a, a long sequence of numbers very quickly. So the starting point is zero. It goes up to zero point two point zero point five in steps of zero point one two five. So you can see I get the same range of values. Now seg two times. I can do the quick way. So I'll start off with zero. Use the colon operator up to it's one second for seg two times. We specified the time one point zero point one two five. So there we have all our values worked out very very quickly. Okay, so once I've defined my values of t, I'm effectively now going to sample my mathematical expression. And again, I'm going to refer you back to the mathematical view of discrete signal capture. So for seg one. That's equal to the offset 50 plus the slope times t. Now t in this case is seg2 times, so that's by seg or seg1 times. So there are the times we're sampling the mathematical expression. Seg1. So there's our signal. Um, now I'm just going to show each individual sample as well. Hold on plot seg1 in red zeros. So there's the individual samples associated with that shown in red zeros. Okay. So switching back to MATLAB. Um, let's create seg2 now. Seg2 is equal to and we started off a value of 90. Uh, multiply that by an exponential of minus t divided by 5. I'll switch back just to check that doesn't seem right. Uh, so it's 90 by e to the minus t over alpha which is 0 0.2. So back to MATLAB. Uh, 0 0.2. Okay. And seg2 should be a sequence of numbers. So this expression is being evaluated for the the values of t that I've defined up here. Oh sorry, that should be seg2 times. Let's change that. So that's seg2 underscore times. So let's plot seg2. I'm just turning the hold off. Plot seg2. So that should be a decaying exponential going from 90 down to close to zero. Okay, uh, and I'll show each individual sample point again by turning back on the hold. Plot seg two in red zeros. Okay, so that's my signal, uh, second part of my signal. Now, the first part of the signal isn't required. Um, I'm just going to create my sig just explain what I mean by that last statement. Sig equals seg1 concatenated with seg2. That's how I do this in MATLAB. And if I close my figures and plot sig, there's my signal. Now I've got this flat period at the very top which is because I've repeated the value of 90 twice. So the first value of seg2 
is 90 and the last value of seg 1 is also 90. So I, I, when I'm creating my signal I'll just specify from seg 2 from the second sample to the end of seg 2. Now let's plot seg again. And there's the signal that I'd want to synthesize. Now I'm going to add that this exponential curve hasn't been captured very well. There's a lot of, you can see the straight lines parts of the exponential curve. So I think a higher sampling rate would be more appropriate. Now I can do that very quickly. I can do all my recalculations by changing the times at which I sample. So let's change seg two times and seg one times. So I specified a sampling rate or a sampling period of 0 0.125 seconds. If I made that much smaller, 0 0.001, so that's a sampling rate of a thousand, sampling period of one millisecond. I'm going to evaluate my expression for lots more, I'll just redo that, uh, I'll, I'll evaluate my mathematical expression more frequently. I'll do the same for seg2. Except that goes up to one second. So now basically I've changed my sampling rate. And I can reevaluate seg1. And I can reevaluate seg2. For my updated seg1 and seg2 times. And now I'll create my sig. And I'll plot sig. And we get a much smoother curve now because I've evaluated the mathematical expression. But I've also increased my number of samples. So in the previous plot you should have seen there was eight uh, samples per second. Switching back to my main drawing area um, I see that I should have had 1.5 seconds so I should have had about um, 12 samples, 12 or 13 samples. And in this one I've increased it to a thousand samples per second so that's roughly about, well that's 15 100 samples. So going back to MATLAB. So I'll just have one extra one there. Okay, so that's just a demonstration of how to create a signal in a MATLAB. Very common thing to need to do. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the next presentation.